Hello, everyone, and welcome to Moonride. This is Dave Johnson. I am here today with Johnny from Tarot's Apprentice. Today, we're going to uh, talk about sort of spiritual pal stuff, how to keep your vibration high during uh, some stressful times. So how are you doing? I'm fantastic. How are you doing? I'm really good. Yeah. Now, um, by the way, everyone, you can get a hold of Johnny Taro's apprentice at gmail.com. And I'll put a link down here. What do you think, Johnny? What's one way you keep the vibration up? Well, the one thing too, um, keeping your vibration high is important, but protecting your vibration in the first place is even more so. Great point. Um, one thing you can do though is see what it is that's bringing you down. I mean, again, like I said, it may sound common sensey, but when you're in the moment, it's hard to to guard yourself against reactions to things because wow. you've just seen it and it's like, oh, I'm having this reaction, it's visceral or it's I'm, I'm coming down or whatever the case may be. Now, the first thing to do is to recognize it. If you are having some sort of reaction to something, if it were physical, we... We, we 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 understand that a lot differently because there's an ache or a pain or something else is going on and we know we need to remove ourselves from that. When it's emotionally or spiritually something that's pain or we, we kind of ignore it or we keep it and then what you do is you pass it on to somebody else. And so what we have to do is recognize when it happens and then remove yourself from that situation or turn off whatever it is you're looking at at least for the moment, until you can gather your thoughts. Because if you try to react to this thing emotionally, that's going to mess up your vibration even more. Mm -hmm. You have to remove yourself from it, gather yourself, gather your thoughts, and then approach it a little more logically than mm -hmm. you do emotionally, is what I say. Can you give like maybe an example? Maybe I could give you an example. I spent yesterday like battling the internet. I was just like, I am going to do all my stretching and exercises today. I am not going to watch 10,000 political videos. I completely failed. <laughs> this thing is sometimes the source of a lot of low vibrational feelings. Yes. You're not 911. And so if somebody has an emergency, let them call them. Take a moment and turn this off and put it in a box and stick it on a shelf somewhere. Remember where you put it. And, and just for a moment, be unreachable. Just for a moment. And, and I understand, oh, I got kids and I got this. I got, okay, I understand. But for a moment, be unreachable. If there is something that is bothering you, remove yourself from it. I had the exact same thing with that thing, mind you, because I'm trying to do one thing and then I'm trying to do something else at the same time on the computer. I'm trying to create cards at the moment and, and then somebody's texting me news stories. And I'm like, you know, I don't really want to see news stories right now because I'm trying to focus over here and then... And then another person asked me for, hey, do you got advice about this and that? And it's just a little bitty things, but it's starting to chip away now. And it's like, okay, I have to actually turn this off, which is what I wanted to do, and turn that off, which is not what I wanted to do. Because they're clashing at the moment, and then my mind is going 10 different directions, and I'm becoming irritated. And it's like, okay, I can feel that, though. Yeah. And so recognize it. Turn everything off. Every whoever's trying to talk to me, they ain't got to say it right now. And then just walk away. Whatever you do, go get a glass of water, go outside, is which is what I did. And this just took a lap. I actually went and got a Starbucks. Don't tell nobody. I did take a lap, and then, and then you go back home, and then you take one thing one at a time. Mm -hmm. And then most of the most of the messages I got, I just swipe delete because they don't need a response. And then I went back to what I was doing recognize it and remove and right respond. right yeah maybe um maybe one other example of like i like the idea of recognizing it because i find myself like recognizing it two and a half hours after like 12 hours video or something yeah babe, it's 12 30 at night but another example maybe of like that recognition for me when i do readings on the content which we do readings on 
I get into conversations too with people and then the conversation becomes bigger than just that one person. It's like, like a global crisis type thing. And then you, you, you either get stressed or you get save the world syndrome to where this is worrying you because what if this happens and what if that happens and what if this happens and what if that happens? Oh my God. There are two cards in the tarot. One is called the five of cups. The other one's the nine of swords. One is stress. The other one's grief. And those two things creep in and set in very easily, even without a person knowing it. And so if you sit there and you talk about this one thing and it's horrible and it's low vibrational to start with, that is going to do nothing but bring you down and keep you down because you're going to be worried about stuff that you more than likely cannot change, at least by yourself. Right. And so it's like, this is not the thing to focus on. You can be worried that a certain someone may enter into the White House, but don't get stuck there. Because if you do, there's nothing you can do by yourself, except now make yourself sick with worry. So you have to again recognize this is not a thing that I need to take on and save this energy and keep it because what is it doing for me? Right. Not, nothing right. good anyway. Right. That was a great point. As we mentioned before, uh, you know, some of this stuff is obvious at the same time. It's completely not obvious. Like that is like a perfect reading of processes that I'm going through because I totally have the save the world theory and I'm totally the warrior. I am absolutely there um, with that kind of energy. What other things do you do? And did you want to talk more about protecting your energy or about maintaining the vibration? It, protecting your energy is harder. And I never, you know, do the whole slap on the wrist. Oh, you should have protected your energy thing because it's hard to do. Because the moment something comes into your life, you react to it. And yeah. so it's not as though you walk around with this barrier of nothing phases me. You can be robotic and like me, because of my air sign. But at the same time, something is still going to get in there. Yeah. Just like the computer and the telephone. Something is going to chip away. It's going mm -hmm. to irritate and you're going to react to it emotionally instead of with logic or sense or reason. And so the thing to do to protect your energy is to know where your triggers are. The thing that you know is going to bother you. Okay, let's say, for instance, I do readings and the readings don't really bother me, but let's say they did. Okay, you take them and you do them for an hour, two hours, and then cut that off. Remove yourself from it. When you stop doing the readings, don't then, like I did sometimes, have a whole conversation about what you just read off. Don't go to someone and say, yeah, can you believe that guy? And can you believe this person? And can you believe that committee? And can you believe this thing is happening? And what about the oil company? And what about Because then it becomes bigger than just you. And then you have saved the world syndrome or you have grief and sorrow. Right. And it's like, I need to get out there and stop this because what are they going to do? And then we know your triggers. And then if you're going to go into that lane, because it's nice to be informed, get your information and then leave it and then go off and do something else. Right. Wow. That's super, super good advice. Right. Tell me more. What other tricks do you have that we could all use? Also, nature. It doesn't want anything from you. And so that is one thing to go out Take, mind you, minus the Starbucks. Okay, fine. But take a <laughs> lap around the block, <laughs> you know, because the tree, it, it doesn't want anything from you. It's not going to ask you about Trump. It's it's just there. You can go walk past it, look at it. It's pretty, keep it moving or whatever the case may be. But go out into something where there are no people, where there are no opinions, where there are no none of this type of thing. If you live in a place where you can't be by yourself, at least go somewhere where nobody's talking about that thing that's triggering you. Whatever it is, it may not have nothing to do with politics at all, but there is something that you can do to protect your energy. Also, singing bowls, they disrupt negative energy. Mm. The first time I heard one, it was irritating. And I thought that is the worst sounding thing I have ever heard in my whole life. Mm -hmm. And apparently that's the point. When you first hear it, if it sounds irritating, that's because it's hitting something and it's breaking and disrupting. And now I love it. And so try your tips and tricks, try your meditation music, watch something funny. 
that's that's laughter really is the best medicine sometimes yeah but there are things you can do to reset yourself mm -hmm. because you're going to have to do it again so it has to be something practical you know if you live in the north pole then maybe the lap around the block is not for you but you can do something practical because something's going to come up and you're going to need to do it again right Right. Well, I know uh, Kim has perfectly great weather, but Kim at Intuitive Use, like, I just vacuum, do, do something that makes me, you know, not thinking kind of thing, just something that's doing. And, you know, y'all can, you know, draw a picture of a flower, you know, y'all can, um, you know, art might help if you can't really access because of the weather. I find just um, sitting and looking at nature is, is a great cure. And of course, if you can, go into nature for several days with no phone and you know you'll you'll come out a different human i don't think people have really started to grapple with internet addiction i think uh, you know it used to be that we would watch an hour of news i am watching like i'm doing my best not to but hours a day of news and it's constantly there even if i'm sitting and um doing something else I will almost unconsciously go to YouTube and search for something to play or watch while I'm doing so. Even if I'm really supposed to be concentrating on something, it's almost like I can't stop my hand from doing it. And I'll watch terrible videos that I absolutely are not healthy to watch. And it's like, oh yeah, another Karen, another Karen. Oh my God. And I'll totally go down the rabbit hole, Karen. Everybody knows I'm asking these questions because I'm like the worst sufferer of <laughs> ADHD distraction and i think really we all are right now it's just yeah. a, a plague upon us it it's sort of the opposite you know our ancestors wouldn't have had any choices it would have been like you can watch the fire have a conversation right <laughs> maybe if you're rich read a book but now we have nothing but distractions nothing but distractions hours and hours of time is just wasted emotionally going on this just roller coaster yeah, no. We have to a society where news is 24-7. Mm -hmm. When we had two, three channels total back in the day, and then one of them showed news until about 10, 11, midnight, and then it went off, <laughs> then, okay, you can afford to know what happens from one person in one outlet. Wow. Now it's like, well, what is Rachel saying? And then what is the CNN saying? And then what is Fox mm -hmm. saying? And what is such and such saying? And then it's all day. And they all talk about the same thing. And then they have the meteorology voice to where everything they say sounds important. Right. And it sounds like a panic even. And then it becomes inducing in you too. And then it kicks up everything and the endorphins and the this, and then you react. And then you just, not only did you hear that person talk about it, but the next show is going to talk about it and you're going to listen to that one too. Mm -hmm. And so that's when you have to recognize, okay, I have to get out of the vacuum. Yeah. Even if, if it's bothering you, some people can take it in and whatever, but yeah. if it is bothering you, then yes, get out of the, you heard it already, get out of the back. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it may be true what we're watching. I mean, Rachel Maddow may be totally accurate, but we're still being manipulated. We're still like putting huge importance on something. And I think one of the reasons that uh, people are supporting a certain orange one is because it's entertaining. Yeah. You know, good government is boring. If you ever read a law, you will never be so bored, right? So no wonder compared to a certain person, Biden seems, you know, quite boring. Anybody who's good, it's going to be incredibly boring, right? Uh, so it, it does make sense that we've given up entertainment and now news is entertainment. It is get, It gets all our emotional reactions, but it's not this abstract thing like, oh, Star Wars, that doesn't affect me. And afterwards I see it as a show for entertainment. It is now like, uh oh, oh my God, what's gonna happen tomorrow? And I don't wanna say that's not legitimate, it is. But at the same time, is it legitimate to spend 12 hours of your day in that incredibly stressful space? No, uh, I think we have to speak up and I think we have to act. But 12 hours a day is probably not. Because you can be, because mind you, it is an actual concern because of the way certain people would like to behave when they're in power. Understood. Yes, it is a concern. 
But what can you do mm -hmm. is the thing you must ask. You can protest and you can vote. Neither one of them require you to watch TV. Yes. Consume news in any way whatsoever. Find your voting place or find your protesting place. That's all you need to do. You can do map quests that has no politics on it at all. Yes. So everything else is by choice. And so what we have to realize is what we are reacting to. If someone is um, giving you the whole plans of, you know, death and destruction, if they were to get into the White House and you're worried about that, it's not here. You can't be worried about something you're not facing right now. Right. All you can do is what you can do right now. Right. right. That is the way you're going to plan for the future. And so if your efforts right now do not pay off in the future, then you come up with a new plan. You don't then shrink in, into grief and to worry. Neither one of them help you. Mm -hmm. So it's you have to come up with a strategy, even as hard as that seems, if you just have to... Moving to Canada is not a strategy. You have to you have to get back from the news and then you have to get more involved. Remember, especially here in the US, your local politics are more important than your government or your, your national politics because they affect your everyday life. And so if you're going to get involved, start there and then change some maps and then change the House and then change the Senate and then change the National Senate and the National House. And so... Those are your stepping stones if you just want to be involved, if you feel as though things are not going your way, mm -hmm. because that's the way they do it on the other side. And so strategize is what you have to do. Again, you can't react to things emotionally. Right. You have to act, react to things logically. And that is very hard to do because that's not how reactions work. Yeah. So, <laughs> yes. Super, but, super, super true. But it's not my job to make you get it. It's my job to tell you. Right. Where you have now not. Right. Well, one good thing about these crises is that people are going into this and going, okay, what is not a trigger? How can I work with others? How can I responsibly be portions of this government? Because, you know, let's face it, 10 years ago, we were not in the streets protesting when, for example, Bush v. Gore, that's when we really should have protested. Uh, we know that uh, Bush should not have won, even with the Electoral College. So, you know, we should have gone out there then, but people were like, you know, I'm busy. So, you know, there, there's something to be said for getting involved, but learning every single fact about every single case is not necessarily getting involved. I, I used to think like, oh, I should know all these things when I get in the argument, I'll be able to convince the other person that I am right and they are wrong. And how many times has that happened? A big fat zero times. <laughs> I, um, I am able to ask questions, which I think brings people along a little further, but whether they are convinced or not is not up to me. So um, great. Now, um, I also watch things sometimes I am shifting to different like YouTube channels, you know, like sometimes I just watch nature, which is another thing I recommend is just being in Australia. Now I have to, I have to say like the thing that brings a tear to my eye is just like a camera on an American natural place. It really does like move me emotionally. And I just like keep, keep the river running for the 20 mm -hmm. minutes while I'm in between things. Um, is there anything you watch to calm you down or? Feeling the it, it is. Um, there's a place in Norway called Skarsbok, and it's a camera and it just goes back and forth like this. The village is all of this big. And there's water as far as you can see. There's mountains on either side. And sometimes the reindeer come down and it snows all the way up until like June there. And it's there's there's from and this is this is a whole nother thing, the bird's eye view. From where I sit. There are no arguments, there are no politics, there's no nosy neighbor, there's no there's no graffiti, there's no nothing. It's just a place and it's quiet and people are going about their lives. You barely see anybody because it's always 10 degrees. But it's the camera just goes back and forth and you can just watch the water go back and forth over the rocks. And mm -hmm. it's it's just the most relaxing thing. And I watch people make things that I can't do. Oh like yeah. Cups and 
ink pen. What kind of things? There's a woman, she takes the ink pens and she takes all this off and she just has that little, you know, the little ink part and she puts beads on it. And it's just the most relaxing thing because there's, again, there's no controversy. It's wow. just a person in their art. And I listen to people talk about cologne, which I shouldn't do because I got 29 of them all. And it's, I just, I sit and I watch things that have nothing to do with this and that and you right. versus me. It's just, it's just, it's the, it's the way the world actually is. The news tells you the horrible part of the world because that's its job. Right. It's supposed to inform you about all the crap that's going on. That way you don't go down this street. Right. But when you look at the actual world, when you walk down the street, there's not always constant drama when you walk down the street. Right. You can walk past a person not knowing what they're going through. They're not knowing what you're going through because we coexist. Mm -hmm. And so that's what the real world looks like. And then when you watch the other spaces of YouTube, you see that. Right. Your perspective is what right. must change. And right. that's another way to protect your energy mm -hmm. is what is your perspective? What are you grateful for? Mm -hmm. The news shouldn't be one of them. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've been uh, really actively uh, I moved. So going out and doing my best to meet new people or I'm going to meet up. So I'm going to go to a, a foreign language conversation tonight. Uh, I, I, I do really want to impress upon people that that the minute you meet a new person, all of that stuff goes right out the window. You're just, it's just so much more. People are so much more interesting and entertaining than the news. And uh, you know, there, there's an emotional content there between two humans, right? Mm -hmm. As there is between the two of us. You know, I used to, um, when I was watching, I, I got sucked into the Karen chain of videos. And there's a certain point where I'm realizing the way that these people are acting. I, just, I had a little bit more sympathy and I was just like, what were they watching for three days before they went to the 7-Eleven and, you know, said nasty stuff? They are stuck in that world. They are still stuck in the TikTok when they go to the grocery store and they're like taking that experience or the experience of seeing cops shoot people into their lives. And mm -hmm. that's how much this is affecting us. It's, it's, um, I think it's going to be a process before we, you know, live up to what you're doing, Johnny, and become aware of what's triggering us. I really appreciate saying that. Because like I said, too, it's, we have to be careful because we pass it on, just like you said, to other people. Mm -hmm. And when you are down in the dumps, energy is a real thing. And so if you are some, you some probably met some people in, in your lives to where the moment they walk in the room, it seems like everything else sucked right out of it and yeah. say, oh, here they come. They're either going to complain the whole time or they're always sad about something or always this and this and all oh, was going to be mad or something's going to be wrong all the time. And so it's, it's energy is real. And so protecting it and raising your vibration is very important and everybody can do it is the thing. It's it's not it's not an able body thing. It's not a language thing. Your vibration is your energy. It can be raised, mm -hmm. and you know how to because there are things you like to do. Do that, right? And then raise your vibration. So we uh, don't want to give the impression at all to people that emotions should be stuffed down and disregarded. How do we deal with those emotions when they come up? Because I am. I call myself a bit of a robot. I'm a Gemini. Not all Geminis are emotionless, but I kind of am sometimes. And I react to things differently than other people. But I also had to realize that an emotion is, is a real thing. Just because it didn't affect you doesn't mean it doesn't affect someone, even if they had nothing to do with it. Right. You can see a wreck between two people on the street and you know neither one of them and still feel bad for both of them. Me personally, I'm like, you know, quit looking because I don't want to be a witness, that type of thing. But you have to compartmentalize. Again, when you are reacting to something or when you have an emotional reaction to something, because it's going to happen. Everybody. 
There is no such thing as a person with no emotion. You're going to react to it, but you have to realize what is it going to do for me afterwards. Go through the emotion, process the emotion. The, as I said before, the nine of cups and the five of swords or the nine of swords and five of cups. Five of cups is crying over the spilled milk type thing. Your three cups have fallen over. There are two left behind you. It's okay to grieve or it's okay to have a reaction. It's okay to be emotional for that thing because that's a natural process of being human. But the two cups behind you also belong to you. Mm -hmm. They need attention too. That's the rest of life. And so you have to then shift your focus, which is a awareness thing. When you are stuck in an energy for too long, then you have to shift your focus and say, okay, let's now take our energy and pour it into something positive mm -hmm. because the rest of life goes on. No matter what it is you lost, even if it's a person, we often think here, everybody lives forever or that person was meant to be yours forever. And that's not the case. We are aware of that, but even when it happens, it's still shocking. And so again, you can grieve, but you did not technically need that person for your survival. And so there is still a focus that needs to shift at some point where the rest of life has to go on because that person would not have wanted you to be stuck in that energy forever. And so Absolutely. there's an awareness to it. Yeah. And absolutely. Whenever I, when someone has had a loss and I do mediumship, always that person goes through and said, my primary concern is you. I don't want you to spend the rest of your life unhappy because I left. That is the last thing that I would want for you. Know that I'm happy in the other side. I don't have any of these issues. I don't have to worry about controlling the net. And they always show up like having the greatest time. And I'll tell people, gosh, this woman just keeps showing me different pairs of shoes. <laughs> and they'll say, oh, my mom loves shoes, you know, or, you know, it's, it's actually really joyful. I think that we do have to go there. There is a loss. There's a feeling of loss. You're going to miss that person a lot. But when you connect, I think you find that they're always there and they're always wanting you to be happy. Of course, they want to be acknowledged, but they also want you to be happy. You'll be doing them a service. Yes. Yeah. And that's the important part is you have to, to keep in mind that when you go on with the rest of life, that doesn't mean your past experiences are invalidated. You just have to go on with the rest of life because the rest of life wants your attention too, mm -hmm. because it's going to happen whether you participate in it or not. Right. And so that's another thing to keep in mind is while you're stuck here in this mode of either low vibration or grief or stress or worry or something, something else is happening. The world is still turning. Mm -hmm. The world of fortune is still going. You still have other things to do. So all the while when I turned this thing off and then turned the computer off, I still had work to do. So I can, you can go to the Starbucks all you want to, but you got to go back home too. <laughs> yeah. <And> so, <laughs> wow. so the rest of life still, still needs your attention because there are other things to do. So it's just a shifting in focus and realize what your current state is doing to you or for you. Great. Thanks so much, Johnny. I really appreciate it. Uh, again, if you'd like to get a hold of Johnny, it's terrorsapprentice at gmail.com. I'll leave a link below. Thanks again. Thank you. Bye-bye, everyone.